What's going on, everybody? Gentleman94 here. Welcome back to another episode of Ben Builds. Today, as you can see, we've done some masking off camera and we're going to be painting up some of the detailed areas. We're going to start off with the engine cone, we're going to do the air intakes, and we're going to do the front nose cone as well. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Uh, let's talk a bit about paint just so we are on the same page here. We're going to be using Tester's Metalizers. Uh, this one here is an aluminum color. And this is magnesium. I actually got two bottles of magnesium. The aluminum color, probably too bright. This is an engine cone. It's going to have soot and dirt and dust and all sorts of things. So it might have to go magnesium. This is my tester's metalizer thinner. You definitely need metalizer thinner for this. Otherwise, it kind of gums up. And we're going to also work on the multiple ejector rack. We're going to paint it flat black along with the front nose cone. So let's go ahead and prep our airbrush and get ourselves ready to go. So we're going to use a, just a basic jar here. We're going to mix up some of this black paint. We actually almost need to buy more. We're running a little low on black paint. Let's talk a little bit about the bombs while I'm mixing up some paint here. We're going to do the bombs, but we're not actually going to airbrush the yellow strip because most of the bombs here had a yellow strip, so we're not going to use that. Instead, we're going to go ahead and use the decals that came in the kit. Not the Hasegawa kit, because remember I swapped out the uh, weapons munitions from the Hobby Boss kit, and I'm actually using the Hasegawa weapon set A for my bombs and my munition rack. So we're actually going to be using the decals out of the Hobby Boss kit because we're not using their bombs, so might as well use their decals. And it's just a very thin yellow strip. I don't really want to airbrush that. It's just so much work. I thought, nah, if I have decals, it'll work. I'm just going to use decals. So we're just going to put some very thin layers of this flat black Tamiya paint here on the nose cone. And we're going to do this layer by layer and take it very, very, very slowly to make sure I don't overcoat anything, get any runs or blobs or anything like that. Just going to take it really, really carefully. I love this airbrush. I've got to tell you, I bought this airbrush uh, used in 2003, I want to say. It's an Iwata HPC. They don't make the HPC in this configuration anymore. It's a little different. Uh, same general idea, just slightly tweaked body and a little different style paint cup. Um, I actually bought this used for like 80 bucks and it came with a whole bunch of paints and I bought it from a friend of mine who acquired it somehow. I'm not sure exactly how. There was a little bit of uh, kind of gummed up excess paint on the inside so I took it apart, cleaned it all, and put it back together and it was ready to go. So since then it has been working like a champ. The only thing that really held me back in the early days of airbrushing was the fact that I didn't have a compressor. I had no way to utilize the airbrush. I always knew I was going to get some sort of a compressor, but I didn't have any income at the time that would afford to buy a compressor. So I ended up, of all things, using my dad's large construction compressor. And I would just basically turn it on, I'd fill it up full, and I would shut it off. And I would just use whatever air was in the tank. Now the problem with that, of course, is that I couldn't regulate as carefully as I really wanted to. Because the air compressor worked great for things that were above, say, 30 PSI. Anything below 30 PSI, it was real, real finicky. So you can see the problem when you're airbrushing here at a max airbrush PSI of maybe 20, 25. I ended up making it work though, and I learned the basics of airbrushing just by airbrushing things and playing around with paint mixtures and stuff like that. So it was a good starting off point. Then for Christmas one year, my wife surprised me with an airbrush compressor small, lightweight, had a tank on it so I could store a little bit of air. And then on the plus side too, it's very, very quiet. You notice that the larger compressors are generally very loud. So what we're doing here, we're just gonna be spraying the rear tail cone with some black paint. And the reason we're doing that is because Model Masters metalizer paints are notoriously finicky. They are very, very thin, very, very lightweight paint. And so if you don't prime it, or apply the paint on top of anything else so it has something to bite into. Anytime it gets hit, nicked, or any tape that touches it, we'll just pull the paint clean off the model. So it's a good idea to put it down on top of a primer coat or some form of uh, paint itself. Even then, it's still going to be a little finicky and it's still going to be very delicate, so we have to be very careful with that. But I'm doing that just to kind of give it a, something to bite into. Now speaking of metalizer paints, I'm going to be using the metalizer uh, magnesium color because the chrome is too bright. I don't want bright chrome aluminum finish looking. I want something a little more matted, a little more, um, I don't know, a little darker, something I can then weather down further. And so we're going to use the magnesium because it doesn't have that bright gloss shine to it that the other color has. And we're going to airbrush it directly on the engine tail cone right 
out of the bottle basically. I needed to add a bit of thinner to this because it's um, a little dried out. So I wouldn't recommend doing this because it tends to not really work as well. So we're gonna make do with what we have though because I don't have any other paint. The other magnesium bottle is completely dried out. So this is the last little bit of this one. I had to add a bit of thinner just to make sure that it flows out of the airbrush nozzle. I'm gonna spray the inside a little bit too. I'm not gonna go crazy with the inside. I'm gonna leave that kind of mottled black and magnesium because I want that to be kind of dirty and grimy, full of soot. You know, I want it to look a little used. And this, of course, it looks too new here. So what I'm going to do all as well is I'm going to have to go ahead and weather it down. And I can do that by using pastel. I think when I was working on my KV-1, I showed them a little bit, though. But I have AIM weathering powders in both soot gray and black. So I'm going to use those to go ahead and give that a bit of an exhaust dirty look about it. Also, what I can do is I can also post shade. I'm going to take a little bit of that flat black, and I'm going to just post shade some of the areas just to give it a little bit of variation. So we're going to take this in very, very light spraying pattern. We're just going to trace around the rivet lines on some of these engine pedals. I don't know if this is a good idea. It may or may not look good. I don't really know. We'll know after we finish it. Then I'll know how I like it. And if, if I want to go ahead and change it up, then we will. But for right now, it's just an idea I have, and I'm going to try it out. That's the thing. You know, model building is a lot of times just trial and error. You paint something, you like it, you run with it. You paint something you don't like, you strip it or you repaint over it. You know, you just have to play around with things. As I said before, Tester's metalizer paint is very, very delicate stuff. I one time built a P-51 Mustang, and it was the 8th Air Force P-51 Mustang with the blue nose, and I wanted to make sure that I could paint the blue nose. I didn't want to use the decal. I wanted to go ahead and paint it. So what I did end up painting the nose, but it was very, very difficult to do because even though I primed the aircraft and I prepared it and I shot it with the metalizer, it still ended up peeling up whenever I masked anything off the aircraft. There are other metalizer paints out there, such as Alclad, which is supposed to be just a beast of a finish. It's supposed to be tough, durable, long-lasting, and you can apparently mask directly on to the paint. Now, that's something you cannot do with Tester's Metalizer because it's going to peel it right off the model. I have yet to try Alclad. I have a bottle, I think, of bright chrome, but I have yet to try it. And the reason I haven't used it is because I don't have any thinner for it. And I'm not entirely sure what type of thinner I can use. Because really all I have, I have some basic paint thinner. Um, I have, of course, the Tester's Airbrush Thinner, and I've got the Tester's Metalizer Thinner. But I don't know if any of them will work for Alclad. So I'm just going to have to sit back. I might actually go out one of these days and pick up a little bottle of all clad thinner and try a few of the other paint lines because I guess, you know, they're supposed to be just bomb proof. So this is looking pretty good. I like the uh, the idea of it. It's a little too stark right now, but I think that I can weather that down with a little bit of weathering pastels. And we'll get to that a little later. In the meantime, I'm going to be painting the inside of the air intakes. Now, the air intakes are at such an angle it's going to be very difficult for me to show you painting it because I'm going to have to contort the aircraft in all sorts of upside down and turned around and uh, positions just to make sure that I can get enough of the paint in there. Plus, they're very thin, they're very narrow, so it's going to be increasingly difficult to get different angles. So I'm not going to show it on camera, but I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of the Vallejo color, and we're going to use an old Q-tip here, and we're going to mix it up with a bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol pour it in the airbrush, and we're just going to shoot it and see what we come up with. And we can always brush paint it as well. Vallejo works very well for brush painting. We'll have to see how the airbrushing turns out. If it does well, we'll leave it at that. If I need to brush paint it, I might touch it up a little later off camera. So looks like this is a pretty good mixture. It's flowing nicely. Let's go ahead and get started here. We'll be right back. Okay. Everything is painted. We are looking good. The nose is painted, the intakes are painted, and then the rear tail cone is also painted. So at this point in time, I'm going to unmask everything and just kind of see how it looks, how it went together, if I had any overspray. Because it happens from time to time, no matter how careful you are, sometimes you will get overspray. There'll be a little triangle between three pieces of tape that you just didn't see. Because I've got a lot of tape on this aircraft, and I did that on purpose so that I wouldn't miss any area and I wouldn't get, you know, black or metalizer color or this white on anything that wasn't supposed to be on. This is always kind of fun unmasking after you've uh, airbrushed an area. And it's looking already pretty good. 
I want to be real careful because I have not coated this with future or anything, so the paint is still exposed. Next time, we'll most likely come back and we'll overcoat the thing with future as long as everything is painted and, and looking good. All right, so intakes look great. Let's go ahead and unmask the nose cone here. Again, successive layers of tape. Tape upon tape upon tape. Overlapped so that we don't expose any of the areas that are not supposed to be that color. And I had to use the Tamiya tape here around the nose cone because nose cones are, of course, curved. And the larger Tamiya tape doesn't want to do that. So you cut the Tamiya tape into fine strips and then layer strip upon strip and just make sure that it's lined up. And then you can put the bigger tape coming off of that. All right. This one, last piece here. Uh, there we go. All right. Look at that. Oh, lastly, let's go ahead and pull off the tail cone masking here for the metalizer. And we're going to call it quits for the day. Let this dry, let this cure before we do anything else. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm done painting this aircraft. I have to do a few ons and ends here and there, such as the fuel vent. That's going to be red. The front nose cone had a small strip of exposed metal that went between the nose cone and the fuselage. I have to paint that in a silver color. Also, the port for the 20 millimeter Gatling gun, that has to be painted as well. Now it's going to take a lot of detail work in terms of masking, but that's going to be next time because I don't want to take the chance of taping off something that's freshly painted. So we're going to let it cure. I think we're going to be okay with this. I think we'll be good. So last piece of tape off the model. Let's go ahead and take a look at our handiwork. All right. I like it. It looks good. Like I said, the engine tail cone is a little stark. Definitely going to have to weather it down a little bit. But overall, man, it's looking good. This thing is really coming along nicely. So we're going to go ahead and call it here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in next time where we'll do a little more detail work, a little more masking, and we'll get this thing ready for a gloss coat of future, decaling, weathering, flat coat display case. And we'll see you back here soon on the next Ben Builds.